Good morning, I'm Agostino Bruzzone. I'm very glad to be here. I thank you, the organization, and I apologize for not be physically with you, but with you with spirit. Today, I and my assistant, uh, Junior Alberto De Paoli, we will provide you a presentation about uh, strategic engineering and this potential in energy sector with special attention to supply chain management. So if technology will support me, let me show and share with you the screen. One moment. Et voilà. So, in fact, I will address strategic engineering as the discipline that is in use in order to address complex system. In special, I will talk about supply chain management. Let me start by talking about energy. Energy context is a classical, very complex system. There are many issues. If I go flower by flower, we'll say obviously one of the major issues is that the population is growing, large part of country are developing, they are increasing their demand of energy, and so there is continuous growth of this one. From other point of view, there are concerns about the impact in terms of environmental impact, as well as in terms of greenhouses, gases, impact. So yeah, pollution on short term and the middle long term. Sustainability issue, in fact, uh, deal not only with the environment, but even with the um, social equilibrium and the economy, because otherwise solution are not sustainable. And obviously, energy, water, and food are scarce resources. So some kind you need to balance, because if you extend the coverage, of um, area to collect, uh, to produce energy. Maybe you can go in opposite direction to availability of space for fields and for food, or if you want to develop your economy by mining, maybe you consume too much water. And so this is a very complex system. Demand respect available reserves are generating nowadays even more speculation and conflict than before. It is something that is not easy to invert. At the same time, sometimes energy savings and efficiency on the process, on the industrial process, on the overall process, are going against the gas, greenhouse gases reduction because often it is require additional combustion and additional production of CO2, dioxin. And so it's, uh, we need to pay attention to pollution like dioxin, or we have to pay attention to greenhouses, gas, we have to pay attention to everybody in a balanced way, so it's not easy. Uh, there are continuously search for new sources, so it's extraction, new extraction and exploration for energy, traditional energy source. There are refurbishment of existing facility, because it's cycle power plant, as well as carbon capture storage ideas, supply chain management to optimize the management of the existing facility. We are constructing new plants. There are investment and construction renewable energy pretty significant. There now are in several countries a significant percentage of the total of energy, but obviously they have limitations. Basically, for instance, we are not always available, they are very discontinuous, so the night you don't have sun, is the wind that could go out of the range of usability of the wind turbine, and so in, And they are limited because geothermal as well as uh, rivers, uh, hydraulic energy is limited by, by the terrain configuration. And effort expectation for new opportunity make it uh, lot of um, research on it for fusion, for new nuclear molten salt reactor that are old one, but we are revisiting with new technologies and so on. But WDT is a challenge and uh, we have to, it's around the corner and not so near corner, unfortunately. 
So to solve this problem, we need technology, I believe, but we need even intelligence, not only individual intelligence, but even uh, collective intelligence strategy, vision. I believe artificial intelligence could help, but we should be intelligent, first of all, we should define strategy. Now, the complexity of that is that it's not an homogeneous reality, it's not clear. There are very different um, situations in Europe, in the world, developing country versus consolidated economy. The consumption of energy for transportation, residential, industry, commercial is quite significant. It's no easy way to go forward. Let's say that all this is complicated by the context. In fact, we are in a classical VUCA, VUCA context, that means volatility, uncertainty, complex ambiguity are main issue. Volatility means that situation that we know now maybe is not valid in the future for the price, the fees change continuously. We have assisting to a dramatic change along the last five years of the price of gas, oil, going up, down, etc. Uncertainty, if we think about to the current crisis ongoing in Ukraine and the other crises arising around, they make very uncertain what is be the future. It's complicated. It's complicated because it's, we will see complex system can involve many different elements that interact. Very hard to think about what could be the future consequence and the ambiguous. Sometimes we have Situation, they are not very clear, they are ambiguous, and you don't know what could be the, the proper way to react or how to act. Oh, now, to solve this problem, you need to have some capability. You need to have a vision, respect the volatility of the situation. So you have to look forward with a vision, with persistence. You need to have a capability to understand among uncertainty. You have, should have a capability to clarify the complexity, and you should have an agility to deal with ambiguity. To give you an example about this complexity, last year, due to the lack of rain, there were shortage of water in Europe. There are in most of the place, but even in Europe. And the channel that go from the big port of the North Europe, let's say Rotterdam, Hamburg, Antwerp, down to the Central Europe, they make very convenient to transport goods. They was in shortage. Now, one of the most rich country in Europe of water is Switzerland because it's all made by Alps and its glacier uh, feed two of the main rivers of Central Europe. Now, it, therefore, the shortage of water make it hard to navigate with barge on the channel, and the barge carrying gas a travel to reach Swiss with the usual frequency. And this created an impact on energy available in Swiss. That is, this look very crazy because when you people, general people, think about water, obviously they think about drinking, but obviously the, the scarce water resource impact much more food because agriculture is 70% of consumption of water and industry is 20%. So drinking is just a part of 10%. But um, can you imagine the shortage of rain, shortage of water, impacting the reducing energy capability in Swiss because the channel was not able to carry out the barge required to carry the gas in Swiss? So it's very complicated. You need really a vision, you need a strategy and capability to deal with strategy. Now, strategic engineering is a new discipline that was created around seven years ago in MIT. In Genoa, we activated the initiative on this sense since uh, long term. And um, we have nowadays, since five years, Strategos as initiative. We have a PhD program internationally with uh, Spain, France, Italy, Hungary, and other going joining. We have a Master of Science pretty active, I will talk to you about. But I believe, Strategic engineering is a very interesting approach to deal with energy. I will just address one slide that is that one about supply chain management, but obviously this is um, supply chain management for plants and for energy and infrastructure, but obviously there's a huge potential for using this kind of approach. Uh, let me first of all just remind what is a complex system and why we have to deal with uh, new discipline to deal with. Complex system. complex system is a system, an entity that is combined by many other ones that interact and generate very 
unexpected reaction, normally self-adapting, and have this kind of emergent behavior that pop up when some condition arise that are not intuitive and you have to deal. It could be addressing many different aspects. Energy obviously is one of that. And let me go through the strategic engineering. Uh, I will use a, a quote, a couple of quotes. The first one came from um, Socrates and deals with the point of what, who is the stratego. Strategos is somebody that have um, one art, he said. The art to understand a little bit better than other what is going and what will happen in the future. And Strategos was the chief of a fleet, the admiral commanding the fleet or the general commanding the army in the city state of old Greece. Now, it's evident that this is a reality. What is the kind of ability that are required to a Strategos? They should have a capability to understand what happened and what to see what will happen and then to decide. Let me say that uh, by quoting another famous strategist, that is uh, Sun Tzu, which is uh, Ling Tha, the art of war. He will say that the general that win the battle make many calculations before the battle is just even started. And the general rules make few calculations. Now, once upon a time, calculation could deal with the abacus, Chinese abacus. Nowadays, for sure, it will rely on computer simulation, modeling, data analytics, artificial intelligence. So as strategic engineering, we don't create the strategies. So we don't create decision maker, but we allow our engineers to develop solution that could help them to take the right decision, to have an advantage in taking decision. And even we create such kind of engineering that have this vision to help. In fact, strategic engineer with the idea that we take many more data than once. Once I remember in the end of the 80s, beginning of 90s, we was getting data from each single turbine that was around the world, maybe in middle of Asia. Each day was sending us the equivalent operating hour, EOH. It is would allow us to understand when could be the next uh, inspection, mm, revision, et cetera was a number, even before we had the uh, email in the company. So it was arriving by fax, one number per day. It was useful. Nowadays, we get a thousand of number per second. So we are order and order and order of magnitude over that time. So that means that we can get the vibrations and identify symptoms, emerging symptoms of a potential failure. So it's evident that nowadays we can do much more than before. Even if uh, simulation, artificial intelligence, data analytics are techniques that we call new, but they date over half a century. Simulation was uh, invented, let me say, introduced by John McLeod at the end of the, just at the end of the war for rocket science and artificial intelligence. We know about uh, all uh, about Alan Turing in the movie that was using it to break Enigma. That was a similar system, let's say different, but some kind of similar system used in the United States to make other kind of calculations. So it's evident that they date a lot, but nowadays we have many, many, many more data inform and uh, infrastructure that could allow us to take, to use these capabilities. So nowadays by this data, we can analyze it using data analytics to extract information, probably using even artificial intelligence. And this information could be very useful to, have, to understand what happened. But when I realize there is a symptom emerging, this done is not a no. We need to understand how to react. And how to react could be, okay, we stop and we make an inspection or we make a substitution, or we wait for the next inspection going there to check better, or we anticipate the next inspection, or we just wait and see what happened. What is the right choice? That analysis don't tell us. It will tell when it will happen, when it will break or not break, but it's to be too late, no? So what is the solution? We need models. We need simulation to look forward, analyze risk and expectation of the impact of different choice and choose that one that we feel is best. 
And the decision maker will have his attitude to risk and his evaluation, but simulation can help him to make a better estimation of the consequence. And that's not enough too, because when we use simulation to knowledge, to get the knowledge of what are the consequences of alternative choice, and we'll take a decision and we'll put the decision in fact, the result that we'll achieve will not be probably exactly what we expected. Always we know something changed. And this difference, okay, we'll take the difference when we'll be able to measure and we'll use machine learning to correct back in a, in a, in a virtuous closed loop to correct back the, the parameters of the algorithms and the tuning of these models in order to improve and growing and learn and better and to adapt to the situation, not necessarily that the model was wrong, maybe the other one player reacted in a different way if there are other players in the loop. This is strategic engineering, that's quite a new idea. And as I told you, we have created this not only in terms of projects that I will show you some potential, but in terms of partnership with major company like Leonardo, Thales, Itachi, major industry, uh, consulting company like Accenture, we have even Rina, Billing Point, with many technology, high tech company, small one maybe, and even agency, NATO Center for, um, Excellence Center for Money Simulation, the Sovereign Order of Malta for Humanitarian Support, the Water Academy for Water Strategy with the United Nations, and so on. And we have partnership with university. As I told you, we have such Master of Science, and we look for partnership. We have a PhD international program with French, Spain, Hungary, other countries are joining. So this is an example. We need not only to develop this solution and this discipline, but even to develop people that could deal with that and work with the other engineers in order to solve problem. Because we have to deal with new threats, new assets, new capability, and because we need to develop a real new concept in terms of modeling, interoperable simulation, and serious game as enabled to make people to understand better the system to understand better the consequence of their decision and to be faster and more effective in applying their strategy. Let me take a look on an overall architecture where in some way you have a real situation, you create simulation, you create the algorithm for that analytics, you develop a smart planner. The smart planner take all the data, look inside, extract the information. This information are provided by decision maker that could be immersed and understand even require additional analysis. These data are provided to the artificial intelligence planner that make hypotheses and ask to the simulation to make a test on the different hypotheses to choose the best one. Same time, even the user can ask the simulation to conduct what if analysis, all in a closed loop with multiple potential operation. And these provide a real strategic engineering environment. So let me take a look quickly to the energy sector and the, the, the slides that I would like to analyze nowadays. Um, for energy transition, we know that nowadays we have a need of energy transition, even for the geopolitical situation, but for many reasons. The closed cycle power plant and gas turbine power generation are cornerstone for sure, because in some way they're able to match the need of reducing pollution, um, in reducing the greenhouse gas emissions, and even a reasonable value, and even to be flexible to new power source. Uh, it's very clean energy. However, the gas turbines are systems that are affected by major impacts, in terms of stress, fatigue, erosion, because of the thermomechanical solicitation. That means that you needed to do a lot of maintenance uh, per day preventive maintenance. Nowadays, through artificial intelligence, we can do much better in terms of preventive maintenance. There's something that could combine, if it's not just preventive maintenance by itself, but some kind of a style of a picture of a strategic approach in managing better the service, okay? So we would like to create, in fact, something that could be reliable, robust service and supply chain in order to guarantee that our power plant could have a good performance. Uh, indeed, the service by itself is the most profitable part of the power generation with traditional big plants. In, uh, in fact, uh, you can do 
majority of profit over there with much less people. And that is means uh, that uh, sometimes you construct a plan just in order to sell the service. Because I mean, if I construct a plan with my technology, with my skill, this plan to use, it's not so easy to, to do some of this element. So that means that in some way I, I created a, a captive market to provide the service itself. And power plant and service have impact in terms of uh, the, your capability to make a smart service that could use preventive maintenance and predictive maintenance together that could respect the constraint required by users that maybe they want to group or keep separate the, the revision. They want they could have a constraint in sites for the space available to amount and mount the machine, the, the turbine. You could have contract that have a constraint. You could have uh, expert expectation. You could have many different elements that could impact you as a, your workshops for producing could be saturated some period. You could have problem in transporting due to some kind of logistic general issue. And so this could be very important. Predictive maintenance in this case require conditioning monitoring, but conditioning monitoring is strongly related to the data acquisition capability and to your capability to extract from data the real value that is the information. Uh, in this case, obviously, when you do that analytics um, to analyze the risk to have a um, problem with your machine in future, obviously, have to understand that there is not just the problem, technical problem, but there are many other constraints. I would say machine and component could have failures, but there are aspects related to the workshop workload and capability to, for instance, refurbish the, the blades that we talk about turbine, the capability of the suppliers, the, the demand and the market evolutions so that could create uncertainty, the, the reliability of your planning, the potential of failure that could impact on other failures, and even uh, the planning itself. So that means the supply chain should be very reliable. And this is uh, connecting your supplier with your customers, okay? And you uh, should have a global view. But in this framework, we have always to remember that the, the weakest link in a chain correspond to the resistance of the whole chain. So you need to have redundancy. You have to need to have alternative. You need to be agile in addressing this kind of problem. Uh, digital solution are nowadays very diffused. You have many tools that you can use. I mean, customer relationship management, supply relationship management, and uh, product lifestyle management, ERP. So all these systems collect a lot of data that could be very useful for you. Supplying relationship management was arising during the COVID crisis because it point out the vulnerability of our product production and of our service uh, related to the external source. And so is a way to in order to identify how to make it more resilient our structure. But probably we need to put intelligence in the loop. It's not just to get the data. The data are normally plenty of lack in consistency. We needed to have a way to extract the information model to predict the consequence, intelligence to identify the best solution together with us probably, okay? From this point of view, let me say that uh, this is an example how we can use modern simulation and artificial intelligence in a combined way to support the decisions in this framework and to have a better control on your supply chain for maintaining, for instance, service of your plants. And this means in some way to construct a digital twin of your energy infrastructure that could allow you to keep the digital twin aligned with the real system to identify what could be the situation, to identify and test virtually what could be the same consequence of your decision. We have done it for many applications. You can do from offshore facility to single machine, to ships, uh, and even to power plant. We have to keep in mind that we can use new technologies in order to do much better, you can see on the upper light that this person 
maybe not too much experience and, and for sure not introduced in this complex rack that connect all the network, for instance, for the control on the DCS, to go through it by augmented reality. And you can have in your smartphone the information about what could be the situation of the plant. And you can interact together in a cave to identify how to supervise mission. So this is a big potential. We have big data, but this big data have to deal with the speed, volume, and variety of the data. So we need intelligence in order to analyze this data. And at the same time, we have a capability in terms of analytics to extract information and to make it growing. And WAI could be a major issue in this sector because it could allow us to do much better. And the intelligence algorithm uh, taking data and controlling event could identify good decision, for instance, to stop, inspect, uh, wait, uh, move, anticipate some inspection. So it could be very important to go forward. And doubly, we can use artificial intelligence as well as machine learning and deep learning that means um, there are similar concepts but with their specific uh, capability in order to understand what is the situation and get a better insight about the of what could be the impact of the situation. You can use different kinds of machine learning in this framework. Obviously, the data are the critical aspect, but even your capability to pre-process the data in proper way and properly designed infrastructure could be supervised, unsupervised, most of the cases unsupervised, and you can have uh, even the capability to do reinforcement learning, learning from. You can use other techniques as fuzzy logic to better understand some connection. Sorry, I apologize for the Italian. Um, you can use genetic algorithm and uh, genetic evolutionary system in order to go from suggestion from the user, suggestion from artificial intelligence, evaluation by our simulation, recombining and getting what could be the best performance. Ability sector, one major issue is availability, we want to improve availability as well as reliability. And even when we talk about warehouse costs, it's not just the warehouse cost by the managing of logistics. In this case, is the warehouse cost in terms of how we manage the warehouse. It will be central warehouse, will be distributed warehouse, it will be mobile warehouse. No, so you have different approach. You have to design the inspection revision that is not just how much you want to store, but even when you want to do the the the, the, the service, because each time that you instated to buy a new layer of blades, for instance, in the gas turbine you refurbish the previous one, you can save $800, $1 million for each layer of starter or rotor blade, average number. So it means that you have uh, eight layers in a single machine over 12 years, you have probably capability to save a dozen of million dollars. But probably you cannot refurbish forever. Someone can be refurbished once, two, twice, three times, but when is the good moment to do? Because the contract is finished, so it's not the infinite situation. In infinite situation, after a, a longest time, it doesn't change too much if you substitute now or later, but in a terminating contract, it changed a lot. And you have, don't have a machine. You have probably dozen of machines all around, maybe 20 machines. So you can understand we talk about million of hundreds of millions of dollars that make it completely different, the profitability of this service. So we need it to recombine, but it's a game like a, a car game. We have to identify when is the best one and we have to respect constraint, technical constraint, side constraint, energy market constraint, user desire, user contract, grouping opportunity, contract issues. So this is very important. And W you can use in closed loop with the simulation. We don't deal just with the blade. You have kits for the different kind of inspection. You have a strategic inventory like a rotor. You can decide to buy an extra rotor and to mount the blade on a rotor. So the rotor is ready with the blades. When your machine stop, you can unload the rotor, put the other one in, inside, start immediately. Obviously, you invest $1 million extra. So it makes sense. What is the risk? What is the problem? So is not the only answer. It is need the modeling to understand if it makes sense. 
Obviously, the blades are one of the critical aspects. In W, if you look around, as I told you, it's not just a single machine, otherwise it was trivial, but there are many machines. In this case, for instance, you have around uh, 7, 10, 12, 14 machines with the first part. You have to rethink, eventually anticipate a little bit, post postponing a little bit the, 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 the inspection and the revision, deciding what is your policy for rotating the blades, what is your policy for regenerating of your new one, this make a lot of change. You can even decide the strategy about cannibalization. Cannibalization could be a way, but usually it's just a contingency. If you manage a contingency, you can less, lost control on it. Usually, you, you, obviously, you need simulation. You need modeling simulation to understand what are the consequences. You need modeling simulation to evaluate the risk and uh, compare the different decisions among themselves. And you have the opti needed optimization, and optimization should deal with your capability to identify what to do, to identify this factor to analyze. This is an example, Lapis 2, for lean management service driven by AI. In this case, we use the simulation and artificial intelligence. Uh, we evaluate the, the stochastic components, such as demand change that could anticipate delay by itself, technically, uh, the con the te con technical constraint for maintenance, but even uh, the performance of your blades, how much uh, scrapping you have. And you have to think about what is the best rotation about that, among all the process. And you need simulation to see the consequence among all the interaction among different plants, different groups, uh, making pooling. In this case, you combine simulation with an optimizer and even with some system that could allow you to understand the suggest artificial intelligence because I believe we need them more and more when we take such decision that deal with dozen and dozen maybe hundreds of million dollars profits uh, net profits uh, we need the, to identify why that your intelligence suggests to do something so in this case we was using fuzzy logic to evaluate the, perf the planning so to explain the motivation of the neural nets to take some decision, how much robust, where it was good, where it was bad, where was the customer or a site or a machine was more good or critical or risky at risk during the planification. Simulation can analyze the stochastic impact, not only on the critical, even on the component, checking the planning. And obviously we need to validate and verify such system in order to identify what is the the aspect and even the low level of stocks that we want to do. In this case, genetic algorithm was extensively used in order to identify what could be the best solution among all the alternative possibility, even taking suggestion from the decision maker by themselves, even taking suggestion by other people or even by AI, recombining them and reproposing. So in this way, this could be a combined optimization that could allow to identify the impact on the system and the fuse could self-explain. So it is an example, but we don't need just technology. We need engineer for the new strategies. That means uh, that uh, the case of Strategos that I was mentioning, it's very important. We have even initiative on the industrial plant engineering that is another sector critical for engineering. We are simulation team. So if you have any question, I will be very glad to answer. Thank you very much.